Batista, Ed, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, CM Punk, and Brock Lesnar share several things in common. All top guys in the WWE over the past decade. All former multiple-time world champions. All guys that are going to be WWE Hall of Famers someday. And all of them since 2007 have been the opponents for The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Not only do they share those things in common, but they were all guys that you could look at and view them as credible, legitimate threats to The Undertaker and his undefeated streak at WrestleMania. They were all guys that felt right for the time. They felt right for the moment. They felt like the guy that belonged in that spot for the most part, and you could actually believe it. You could actually buy into it. You actually wanted to see it. Well, now WrestleMania 31 is creeping up around the corner, and it appears The Undertaker is coming back, and all indications and all signs are pointing to that his opponent at WrestleMania 31 is going to be Bray Wyatt. So we go from Batista, Edge, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, CM Punk, and Brock Lesnar to Bray Wyatt. I'm sorry, but one of these guys is clearly not like the others. And I don't care what type of spin anyone wants to try and put on this. Bray Wyatt facing off against The Undertaker at WrestleMania 31 is just stupid. And there are several reasons why. It's stupid. So why is it stupid? Well, let's look first at Bray Wyatt's run so far in the WWE. Excuse the hell out of me, but what has Bray Wyatt really done to earn this spot? What has Bray Wyatt done to be able to get this opportunity? And where, from a character standpoint, does this frankly make sense? We're talking about a Bray Wyatt here that couldn't even beat John Cena in a glorified three-on-one handicap match at WrestleMania 30. The same John Cena that Bray Wyatt could only defeat at Extreme Rules in a glorified three-on-one cage match because an eight-year-old dressed up in a robe came out in the freaking front of the cage door singing in a goddamn altered voice. This Bray Wyatt. The one that couldn't go over John Cena clean at any point in time in multiple glorified three-on-one handicap matches. This is the guy that we feel is perfectly positioned to go up against The Undertaker. The same John Cena that he couldn't beat in multiple three-on-one handicap matches in 2014 that got destroyed head-up man-to-man by Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. The same Brock Lesnar that dismantled The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30. The same Brock Lesnar that John Cena couldn't go over in 2014 and neither at the Royal Rumble as well. This Bray Wyatt. The same Bray Wyatt that lost to Chris Jericho in 2014. From a character standpoint, who the hell loses to Chris Jericho anymore? Well, Bray Wyatt most certainly did, and he struggled to go over in that feud. He had a hard time getting over Dean Ambrose. You know, over the past couple of weeks on Raw, for Christ's sakes, you've been building him up. By having him struggle to beat Dolph fucking Ziggler? Dolph Ziggler! He can barely beat Dolph Ziggler! And now you're telling me this guy is going to be the next in line to face The Undertaker? Whose past eight opponents were Batista, Edge, Shawn Michaels twice, Triple H twice, CM Punk, and Brock Lesnar. I'm sorry, but that's just stupid! It's also stupid from a storyline standpoint because, in my opinion, frankly, there are several better and more appealing options if you just have to have Taker wrestle at WrestleMania 31. First, you've got Brock Lesnar. This is the guy that ended The Undertaker's undefeated streak. That's the most logical choice. We've had a recent pattern of rematches for The Undertaker, and these were guys that he beat in the form of Shawn Michaels and Triple H. So why the hell not go there again? Why not do a revenge or retirement angle? I mean, if this is going to be Taker's last WrestleMania match, and for all intents and purposes, it very well could be. We just don't know. Why not have it be Brock Lesnar that sends him out? Why not have it be the guy that ended the streak that retires him as well? There's just so much in terms of potential intrigue here for a story. Why would you not go there? Or if you're not going to go there, you at least give us the freaky fantasy match with Sting. For crying out loud, we've been waiting for this match for 15 plus fucking years. This is the dream match. This is the fantasy match for Sting and for Taker. 
You finally have both of them under contract at the same damn time. And I don't want to hear about this where you do it next year at WrestleMania 32 crap. Where is there any guarantee that one or both of them is even going to be a part of next year's show? The stars have aligned. The opportunity is there. Whether it's too late or not doesn't matter. You still have a chance to do the fantasy dream matchup. And you're going to throw that chance away for somebody like Bray Wyatt? Hell, you could make a better storyline out of John Cena going after The Undertaker. You could either do a retirement angle there with The Undertaker and have Cena be that guy. You could sit there and give us a dream fantasy matchup here in a lot of ways. Yes, even though the streak is over, John Cena versus The Undertaker is a match that still has a lot of drawing power and a lot of intrigue for a freaking WrestleMania because you don't know who's going to win. It's that simple. And not only that, you can sit there and tie it in with Cena getting dismantled and dominated by Brock Lesnar and him wanting to establish that he's still got it. He's that top guy. You've been going with this old man Cena crap anyways. Well, what better way to prove himself than going up against the guy that Lesnar beat at WrestleMania 30 in The Undertaker? But instead, they've given us Bray Wyatt. Where is the appeal here? Where is the story here? Okay, Bray Wyatt likes to play mind games. And what else do you got? Bray Wyatt's character, no matter how much the WWE has tried to overcompensate in recent months and make a big-time correction, hasn't done a good enough job of building up this guy into a credible, legitimate, uh, decent WrestleMania opponent for Undertaker. And then when you look at the fact that there are other better options out there, going in the Bray Wyatt direction is stupid. And the biggest reason to me it's stupid is because now that the streak is done, now that the streak is over... Taker serves no more purpose. His character has no more reason for being and showing up and wrestling at WrestleMania. And when you look at what happens with a Taker wrestling again at a WrestleMania, it's just a lose-lose stupid situation. If he wrestles Bray Wyatt and he wins, it's stupid. Why lose at WrestleMania 30 just to have him win right back at WrestleMania 31? He can't beat Brock Lesnar, the part-timer, the UFC guy, but he can come back after a year off and beat a guy that's on a bit of a hot streak that is going to be one of the featured standard bearers of the WWE in Bray Wyatt. It accomplishes nothing. And if The Undertaker loses, it's also stupid. Because he goes from going 21-0, mind you, to going on a losing streak. Now we're asking, can Taker ever win another WrestleMania match? And now you're telling me the same Bray Wyatt that couldn't go over Cena, even in three-on-one glorified handicap matches, is now going to measure up to Brock Lesnar because he's going to be able to do what Brock Lesnar did the previous year, which is beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. You diminish what Lesnar accomplished by having somebody beat Taker that very next year. So by having Taker wrestle, you accomplish nothing. If he wins, it's stupid. If he loses, it's stupid. The bottom line is, it's just stupid. The whole purpose for ending the streak was to move on, not to hang on. Bringing The Undertaker back to WrestleMania 31 is hanging on. It's not moving on. It's not helping anybody. It's not benefiting anybody. And in this particular case, when it comes to The Undertaker, there are just flat out better options for him. Brock Lesnar, Sting, John Cena, all much more compelling and intriguing options in my mind than Bray freaking Wyatt. And look, I know for a long time I've talked about this ad nauseum about the fact that the WWE needs to build up new stars. I don't dispute that at all. I completely agree with that. But let's not sit there and say all of a sudden that The Undertaker and his streak of WrestleMania is about building up that next generation. It's not. It's about having those marquee matches at WrestleMania for The Undertaker. And Bray Wyatt just flat out doesn't measure up. And now you can't sit there once the streak has been snapped by an old guy having to sit there and have The Undertaker being used now without that streak in his back pocket to build up that next generation. It just doesn't make sense. It's stupid. Having Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker is no guarantee of any type of success. It's frankly going to very well be a manufactured storyline where what's the appeal? Bray Wyatt plays mind games. Undertaker plays mind games. Well, whoop the frickin' do. There's no guarantee that this story works. There's no guarantee that this feud works. And based off of Taker's history last year, there's no guarantee that the freaking match works. Absolutely none. 
And when you look at it, what does Bray Wyatt really get out of this? If he wins, he stays heel when the people want to get behind him and cheer him. He also does something that was just done the year before, so it doesn't quite have the same meaning or impact. If you were going to have Bray Wyatt face off against The Undertaker, then at least do it last year at WrestleMania 30. Yes, his character wouldn't have necessarily been ready at that point in time either, but at least there would have been more possibilities. There would have been much more intrigue, and it would have done a lot more, frankly, to elevate the Bray Wyatt character than wrestling The Undertaker at WrestleMania 31 is going to do. But if he loses to him, then he can't beat the guy that's around once a freaking year. I mean, it just doesn't help. It's not good. There's just no real positives I can see out of this. So for all the reasons that I've stated, and so many more that I frankly haven't even begun to touch on, in my opinion, Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 31 is stupid, will be stupid, and is going to be stupid.